everybody, my name is Kim and welcome back to my channel, Bookmarks and Breadsticks, a booktube channel dedicated to reviewing all things food writing related. As a reminder, food books are not cookbooks. Food books focus on food writing anywhere from the history or origin of a single ingredient or item, food memoirs from the perspective of chefs, food critics, etc., or special topics or food and travel like Anthony Bourdain. Today I'm here to talk about something amazing, which was my bridal shower and bachelorette party last weekend. And I'm sure you're like, Kim, this is a booktube channel, are we talking about your wedding? We are going to kind of momentarily, because I just have to give so much love to my friends and family. Trying to plan a wedding during a global pandemic sucks. It's bad. On top of that, I was between jobs in May, and my dad is also going through chemotherapy for the second time in two years. So I have a trifecta of really not fun things, and my bridal shower was something that all my friends were looking forward to throwing, and my sisters, who are my matron and maid of honor, I'm the middle child of three sisters, they had to deal with a lot of curveballs given the, given the pandemic. So they knocked it out of the park. We spent the morning at a cute little inn having a tea party. We literally had little hors d'oeuvres, little snacks, tea, and I got to open a few presents there. And then I, we all went back to my house, uh, my family's backyard, so that we could be in a controlled environment again. Oh, side note, we were the only group at that little country club besides the chef who cooked for us, the waiter, and the uh, like maitre d' or owner of the building and everyone wore masks everyone had gloves they were super nice and made us feel really safe and comfortable so we all go back to my family's house for a couple hours later and one part i'll save the details of most of the bachelorette party but one of the big things that we did was a scavenger hunt and the scavenger hunt had clues that had me running all over the backyard and my friends are the best because do you know what those items and prizes were from the scavenger hunt they were fucking books it was amazing. I am so excited. And also my younger sister and her boyfriend got me this cute little book stand with my logo from my channel. I was so touched. So now in upcoming videos, you'll see it kind of set up like this. And like, don't I look fancy? Don't I look like a real booktuber who knows what she's doing, who has thousands of subscribers? You should subscribe. Hit that below and the like button. I'm really hoping I can get to 100 subscribers by the end of summer. Sorry, little self-promotion there. So I got a bunch of books on this trip when I went home. I also did stop by a local bookstore called Book Review. It is the oldest and largest independent bookstore on Long Island, which is super cool because it I, was 15 minutes from me growing up. So I didn't really learn to appreciate it until I was gone. I also stopped by a Barnes and Nobles because I did have a gift card I wanted to use. So this is a little bit of a bachelorette book haul and I won't tell you what came from where, it doesn't really matter. I adore my friends for that scavenger hunt and for what, that they, they knew me so well. They knew that I don't drink alcohol for medical reasons, not that I really need to give you an excuse. I don't drink alcohol, it's COVID, I didn't want to be near a lot of people. I wanted something simple and felt like me. And the fact that their scavenger hunt prizes were macaroons, delicious snacks, and books, I just, I hope they look at this video and know that I love them and I'm so grateful I have them in my lives. But let's get on to the books. So the first book I picked up is, and I won't stack them here because this will fall down. The first book I got is Twinkie Deconstructed, a pop science journey into the strange and surprising ingredients found in America's favorite packaged foods. This is by Steve Etlinger. This one's pretty old. I think it's from the early 2000s. I'm very excited to read this one and continue to add to my sweet series, which I'll tag above in the cards if you haven't watched. I have a running series of reviews for books based on different sweet foods, including fluff and candy. There's more to come. I'm really excited to add that to the pile. Another book I got was Eat, Pray, Love. I know we all know this book. Well, a lot of us probably only know the movie, but I really wanted to read the book and see what I could get out of it. This is the 10th anniversary edition of Elizabeth Gilbert's book, and I'm really excited to, I'm really excited to just enjoy something a little bit on the simpler side when it comes to food. Third book on the list is I Love You So Mochi by Sarah Kuhn. 
Um, it's got a review of a satisfy as satisfying as actual mochi. I gobbled it up, which it's a review from Maureen Gu, and I did a review on her book, the the way you make me feel, which I'll link in the cards above. So. Kimmy Nakamura loves a good fashion statement. She's obsessed with transforming everyday ephem ephem ephemera. Whoa, that was a tongue twister. She's obsessed with transforming everyday ephem ephemera into Kimmy originals, bold outfits that make her and her friends feel like the ultimate versions of themselves. But her mother disapproves, and after they get into an explosive fight, Kimmy's entire future seems to be on the verge of falling apart. So when a surprise letter comes in the mail from her estranged grandparents, inviting her to Kyoto for spring break, she seizes the opportunity to get away from her disaster of a life. So part of this, or most of this, will take place in Japan. I'm not sure how much of it is food focused versus just the title saying, I love you so mochi. But Japan is not an area I'm familiar with. We're actually going there for our honeymoon in April of 2021. Hopefully the pandemic is fine by then, or the pandemic is gone, not fine, it's gone. Um, but I'm really, really excited to learn more about Japan. This book is by Amy Thompson, the, Amy Thomas, excuse me. Um, this is Brooklyn and Love on an island where finding love can be just as hard as finding a dinner reservation on a Friday night. Amy Thomas never imagined a family would fit into her independent lifestyle. Fifth book on the list is Food Fix by Mark Hyman. I think you guys can see that. Um, there's a lot of praise on the back. Ooh, I just found a piece of tape on the back. Hold on, give me a sec. Okay, good. I, I hate when stuff's on my book jackets, I know. The most powerful tool to reverse the global epidemic of chronic disease, heal the environment, reform politics, and revive economics is food. In Food Fix, the number one New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Mark Hyman, it's a terrible last name, explains how food and agriculture how our food and agriculture policies are unfairly influenced by money and lobbies that drive our biggest global crises, the spread of obesity and food-related chronic disease, climate change, poverty, violence, educational achievement gaps, social injustice, and more. I'm sure I'm going to enjoy this book. This reminds me of The Omnivore's Dilemma and a lot of the food policy books I have been reading. I really think it's important that we start to understand how, you know, the Sugar Council can go to the government and lobby that the servings or what the maximum number of servings or grams of sugar you can have in the day. And that's not based by science, it's based by dollars. So these are things that you have to, we, we have to start becoming aware of about how politics, money, how all of that actually influences the way that we eat and how that can really be hurting us. I'm excited to read this one. I don't think I'm ever not excited to read a book is a better statement. Okay, halfway down. So this is Persia. Um, Taste of Persia. So this is obviously a food cookbook and everyone's like, oh my god, she never reviews cookbooks. I don't normally, but I am Persian. I have always wanted Persian cookbooks. This is a hefty boy. I am excited to go into this one and really learn how to cook. Iran is one part of the book, um, but I'm excited to go through this and there are some gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures in here that are delicious and I'm really, really excited. I did not grow up learning to cook Persian cuisine. That's usually something that gets passed down from the grandmother to the mother to me. Um, my grandmother did pass a few Persian dishes on to my mother who is just an American Jersey girl who did not grow up with the cuisine, but that chain has kind of broken down since my grandmother passed away when I was in middle school. This is a James Beard Foundation Book Award winner, which means it's legit. Very excited. I'm excited the next time I see my dad to bring this book and ask him what recipe maybe I should start with so we can set the bar pretty low in terms of ease. Next book on the list is Sourdough or Lois and Her Adventures in the Underground Market, a novel by Robin Sloan. So this is, uh, I'll read the back for you. Lois Clary is a software engineer who codes all day and collapses at night, her human contact limited to the two brothers who run the neighborhood hole in the wall from which she orders dinner every evening. That does not sound good for her diet. Then disaster, visa issues. The brothers quickly close up shop, but they have one last delivery for Lois, their culture, and I don't mean where they're from. The sourdough starter used to bake their bread. She must keep it alive, they tell her. Feed it daily, play it music, and learn to bake with it. Lois is no baker, but she should, but she could use a roommate. She might have wanted to start with a house plant. Because I, I think you can kill starters pretty easily. 
Um, but you could use a roommate, even if it's a, ne a needy colony of microorganisms. Soon, not only is she eating her own, her own homemade bread, she pr she's providing loaves daily to the employer's cafeteria. When the company chef urges her to take the product to the farmer's market, a whole new world opens up. It's a really cool title. Uh, it's a really cool cover, even though it's just a lot of text. I think it's supposed to, the, the color texture is meant to mimic like bread. I'm excited to read fiction, but it's also fiction that's based in like, who doesn't love a farmer's market or an underground food market? It sounds like a lot of fun. See, I do read some fiction. This is a memoir outside of food writing. This is In the Land of Men, a memoir by Adrian Miller. This book got so much praise when it came out last year, and I've always wanted to read it. I love that it's, um, it probably won't show up, but the pages on this are actually sewn and bound together in little grouplets, and that, that grouplets is not a word, in little groups, which makes me excited. It's a fierce and funny memoir about coming of age in a male-dominated literary world of the 90s, becoming the first female literary editor of Esquire and Miller's personal and professional relationship with David Foster Wallace. So I actually have an English Lit degree. I originally, I wanted to be a writer. I worked in a talent agency in New York City. I worked in film and television, but we did have a literary team that worked upstairs. And I think this is gonna be something that I can relate to. I think there's a, a movie that came out this past year called The Assistant, which is similar to this. I'm really excited for a book that's outside of food, which is my norm, and but still something that I think is really relatable, especially about women having careers and really moving far in their industries and what the pushback is like, just because of your gender. So this was a complete cover by uh, which this cover is gorgeous. Is it not beautiful? I think it's really pretty. So this is The Cook by Melise de Paranagal, K-E-R-A-N-G-A-L. I'll link it in the description below. It is a novel. Um, she, it looks like she's written another book called Author of Heart, and it was translated by Sam Taylor, which make, obviously it wasn't originally written in English. I don't know which language it came from. I think it's... Um, Hold on, I can find this. Oh, it was first published in French in 2016. This is, I don't even think this counts as a novel. It's a novella, right? Under 100, pa 100 pages is about a novella. Uh, this is 100 pages on the dot. I paid way too much money for this. I think I paid $16, but it was, I'll, I'll spoil it. I did buy this at the book review, the independent bookstore, so I don't mind giving them my money. I'm guessing that the increased cost had something to do with the translation to bring the book to America, maybe licensing rights. But for 100 pages, I'm sure on a day where I just want a breezy book, I'm really, really gonna love reading this. It's just beautiful and looks delicious. It is a novel too, so meaning it's fiction. Two left. Next one is We the Eaters. If we change dinner, we can change the world by Ellen Gustafson, the co-founder of Feed and Food Tank. Hopefully this shows up. So fun fact, I am actually an intern with Food Tank. This is not a sponsored video, um, but I got an internship at Food Tank between my jobs because I really wanted to learn how to start writing food journalism, which is really hard. I am not that great at it, despite having a writing background. Um, so I have a little bit of a steep learning curve, but I really, when I saw it was by the founder, honestly, I just picked it up and it's a cover by, essentially. Um, but to read the inside for you, we the eaters, why eating more responsibly is the ultimate patriotic act. Roughly 1 billion people in the world are hungry and more than 1 billion are overweight. These crises are rooted in our current food system. No duh. While it's no surprise that the iconic American meal of burgers, fries, soda, and processed treats, now exported and consumed around the globe, has helped cause the obesity crisis in the U.S. and abroad, the corporate and agriculture practices behind the production of those fast foods also hurt the environment and contribute to terrorism, rising healthcare costs, and global poverty. So it's definitely food politics, a little bit of food sustainability. It pretty much was a cover buy for me, but I'm excited to see how it goes. The final book. I got for $2. Um, book Review was having their outdoor stall sales where you can go through all of their books that they're trying to offload inventory for and buy them super cheap. This book is The Rituals of Dinner, The Origins, Evolution, Eccentricities, and The Meaning of Table Manners by Margaret Visser. Visser? Visser. It's not the most interesting cover. It's a little plate with napkin, fork, knife, and etc. 
This is a hefty one. This is about 400 pages. Um, there's a really heavy bibliography at the back. It doesn't have any cover jacket or really plot description, so all I can do is go off the front, which is what are the origins, evolutions, and eccentricities of table manners and the rituals of dinner. I do love when you buy used books and there's like little pieces of writing and scribble inside of it. I don't know what this means. It says X7 Gill 880 and then it was $6 at one point, but I got it cheaper. She also has another book called Much Depends on Dinner. I don't know where I heard about this author. I'm pretty sure I heard about her on Gastropod um, and maybe even in B. Wilson's book about it in B. Wilson's book, Consider the Fork. Um, this is from 1991, so it's, a, it's old at this point, in my opinion. Not ancient, not like out of touch, but because it is a historical book. But I'm excited to read it. But that is all 12 books of my Bachelorette Books haul. Which stand out to you? Do any? I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love the book about Twinkies, In the Land of Men, and I Love You So Mochi. I, I have a feeling those will be my top three around, and also Sourdough, the Sourdough fiction book, probably top four. But again, I cannot tell you how much this party meant to me. We were all safe. Um, we all tested negative for COVID after. My dad, who's going through chemotherapy, specifically got the okay for us to be there. Um, he tested negative for COVID again on Tuesday. Every time you go for chemo, you have to be tested for COVID because you're entering a hospital. So I don't want anyone to think he had symptoms and when. It's routine process. Um, but he tested negative, so it was a big relief that we could do something that felt safe in a small group and that my friends and family know me well enough that what I need right now in the world is not 50 new cast iron stainless steel pots and pans, but some books that help me escape the not so great world we're in right now and go enjoy something super awesome. So that's what I've got for today. Let me know in the comments below what you're interested in. If, let, so this is Bookmarks and Breadsticks. My name is Kim. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the comments below and maybe your wedding gift to me will be helping me hit 100 subscribers. Until next time, booktube, have a great day.